Avengers Endgame is a once-in-a-generation event and is now shattering box office records around the world. Hang on! <laughs> Avengers Endgame, rated PG-13, now playing. What is poppin' YouTube? What is good YouTube? What's you here with a video on Endgame? So by now, you should have watched the movie. It's been out for two weekends as of the time of uploading this video. So if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe to never miss any of the content. We are giving away a Hasbro Infinity Gauntlet that I featured multiple times on my Instagram. At War Stew, loads of pictures and clips of me using the gauntlet there. So all you got to do is subscribe to the channel. Let me know down below what is your favorite deleted scene or scene that it didn't make that we're going to go over in a few seconds. And also, we will be giving away a PS4 or an Xbox One X or a PS5 or the new Xbox when the channel or if the channel ever hit 100,000 subscribers as a thank you to you guys. So all you got to do is keep tuning into the channel and keep subscribing and keep liking and keep commenting and keep giving feedback and all that good stuff down below. So recently, the screenwriters and the Russos, etc. have been talking about a lot of deleted footage and a lot of what if situations that they, that they try to pull off for Endgame and Infinity War, but they didn't. So we're going to go over a bunch of them. A bunch of them are pretty insane. So, as you are likely aware, Endgame sees Earth's mightiest heroes start their mission by journeying back to three different points in the MCU history. New York during the Avengers, Asgard during Dark World, and Morag drawing Guardians of the Galaxy. However, in an interview with Fandango, McFeely recalled how New York wasn't always in the plan. Instead, this is really funny, guys. This is so funny. Tony Stark was initially going to accompany Thor back to Asgard where he'd get into a fight with a familiar figure. Now, this is so funny. Yeah, our first draft was a version where Tony and Thor go to Asgard because I like the idea of Tony going, like in theory, going to Asgard and seeing science versus magic and stuff like that. And then he'd fought Heimdall, who could, of course, see him even though he had his invisible stealth suit on or something. Though they abandoned the sequence was also supposed to be set during the event of Dark World, McFeely explained that it would have been revisiting a slightly later point in the film when Thor's fight with Malekith had already been won. We did that because there is in Dark World to get technical about it during that time when the reality stone is there, the space stone is also there in the vault. So at the end of Dark World, you might remember Volstag and Sif go to the collectors and pass off the reality stone because they don't want to keep two stones in one place. Interesting. In a previous interview with New York Times, Marcus mentions that the alternate Asgard sequence was also going to feature longer scenes with Natalie Portman, aka Jane Foster. But according to McFeely, Plans changed when the co-director, Joe Russo, suggested that the Avengers instead look for the Space Stone in New York. I think Joe Russo read it and he goes, why aren't we going to Avengers? It's the only, the most exciting movie. And we went, yep, let's do it. While Marcus was initially concerned about revisiting the Avengers movie, would come across pandering and playing the greatest hits. To be honest, guys... Endgame is kind of like the Avengers greatest hits. I watched a bunch of other YouTube reviews and a lot of YouTubers I watch, which isn't many, they did say uh, Endgame is like the greatest hits and Infinity War is the more serious movie. And I do agree with that. He eventually decided that a New York sequence would be the most fun route they could take. He may be right, but they still left us to wonder how the fight between Iron Man and Heindel would have went. That would have been insane. No one would have seen that coming. That would have been fantastic to see that. So, the Avengers Endgame is out now, as we know. The Russo brothers have answered some questions. Recently, the Russo brothers talked at length about potential plot holes and turns. Writer, writers Christopher, Marcus, and Stephen McFeely also answered a bunch of fan questions which reveal alternate and deleted ideas for the movie, and some of them are pretty insane. It's revealed that following Infinity War, they couldn't figure out what to do with Thanos in the Avengers Endgame. Until producer came up with the idea to kill Thanos. Once the producer came up with the suggestion, they explored the idea and found it could work. The memorial showed in San Francisco with all the names also was going to be featured in every city with millions of names. That would have been rather interesting to see. They originally had thought at the start of the movie on a mission of vengeance, but realized he was always on a mission of vengeance and always failed. So became Fat Thor, 
No, that's literally what this article says. They confirm there was a time in Infinity War during Wakanda when they had Banner and Hulk compromising and becoming the Smart Hulk. So essentially, Professor Hulk was going to be featured during Infinity War. That's probably the scene where Hulk is running with the other Avengers. So realistically, if you read this, it does sound out like it was a real scene. But they say it came at the wrong moment. It was an up and right when everyone else was down. They also confirmed for Avengers Endgame, they wrote scenes in a lab about the merging involving Gene splicing, but ended up going the route in the movie. My note, didn't they read the comic? There is no Gene splicing to become Professor Hulk. Interesting. So yeah, that is a lot of criticism that I've heard from fans and people in the comment section that people wanted to see Banner and Hulk merging into one, which realistically doesn't make any sense why we never got to see it. It's mental and psychological thing Further reading, Hulk is the worst character in the movie. Yeah, I kind of agree with that because they ruined him. They considered using the Hawkeye's archery scene in Infinity War after the snap, but it didn't seem to make any sense as Hawkeye wasn't in the movie. Joe Russo said to put the scene in the front of Endgame instead. They confirmed Captain Marvel is in the Avengers Endgame less than some people thought she would be. Certainly, Captain Marvel is in Endgame a little less than you would have thought before going to watch it but that's not the story we're trying to tell you it's the original avengers dealing with the loss and coming to the conclusion and she's the fresh nubula they tried using the living tribunal in infinity war during the fight on titan we've mentioned this before but they say everyone responded to it like what i think that would have been much better whoa he's got three heads it would indicate a whole level of architecture to the universe and that i think it was too much just to throw in they also say Kevin Feige is still considering using the Living Tribunal. Now, personally, I here on the channel, you know me. You know me. I really think they missed a trick by introducing someone they could have already introduced. The Living Tribunal staff was used in Doctor Strange movie by Mordo, so that would make the most sense. I mean, they've already teed him up. They've already Easter egged him. If Easter eggs actually mean anything in this universe, they should have teed him up. But essentially, it seems like they tried to do it, but didn't. The next one is pretty interesting. So... It has come out that Kevin Feige came up with the idea of time travel, which is very interesting. McFeely said, Kevin Feige at one point said, I would like to use the time zone or use time as an element. It lets us spend a few weeks seeing what's the coolest thing we could do with time and not break the movie. Marcus, we all sat there going, really? We're really going to do time travel? It was only when we were looking at who we had available character wise. We hadn't used Ant-Man yet. And there's really is in people's theories of Quantum Realm, a time thing in the MCU right now available to us with a character we haven't used. We have a loophole. That's not cheating. So yeah, literally every single person on the planet was correct when they said this movie was going to be centric to time travel. And then they kept saying there's no time travel. There's no time travel. So it's interesting that Kevin Feige actually came up with the idea. Thor was going to have a long scene with Natalie Portman. The Guardians of the Galaxy Peter Quill Morag scene was originally a lot grander and more epic in scope, but hugely complicated. McFeely adds, it was underwater that was so clever, but it was just too big piece set. What they didn't do is allow for Thanos and his daughters to get on the trial at the right moment. So we went back to when Peter Quill was there. Another scene involves somebody getting into a car and driving to Dr. Stephen Strange's house which would be interesting. I kind of find it annoying that Doctor Strange wasn't really in the movie. So instead of using Robert Redford, they wrote scenes with Nick Fury and also a version of Maria Hill. And we realize that when you can punch Quill in the face, it's hilarious. I still think it's hilarious. Regarding the final battle, a scene they wrote that didn't make it into the movie involved all the heroes in the trench talking, which... They decided wouldn't work and didn't look right. I mean, personally, there actually is going to be an extended scene in the Blu-ray, but I would have liked more action, more talking in that actual fight. So McFeely, it didn't play well, but we had a scene in the trench where for some reason the battle got paused for about three minutes and now there's 18 people all going, what are we going to do? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Just bouncing around this complete fake fraudulent scene when you have made that many people, it's invulnerable, 
is one line, one line, one line, and that's not a natural conversation, Marcus. It also required them to find enough shelter to have a conversation in the middle of the biggest battle. It wasn't a polite world war, a battle where you have a moment. That's pretty interesting. They thought of bringing back Hank and Janet Pimp in suit. Regarding the Marvel Netflix characters appearing in Endgame like Daredevil or Luke Cage, they feared not enough people were aware of these characters. I mean, guys, to me, that is complete BS. Why? Because Marvel Netflix owns them, so they contractually could not use these characters, even if they wanted to, without getting into a massive lawsuit with Netflix. There's some resting period, so they cannot use these characters for X amount of years, so this is ridiculous, but they do give some explanation, which I do not believe. McFeely. We would have wanted to introduce these five characters or whatever, many. We already are assuming people have seen a lot of the movies are we really going to assume they have bought a netflix subscription and watch these shows enough so they know who they are etc marcus it also screws up the timeline you would have to assume they got snapped away or otherwise they might have shown up earlier i think the only character who has come from tv to the movie is Jarvis, aka James from Agent Carter. Now they talk about the Fox characters, which is interesting, because everyone knew that the Fox characters were not coming, so he said this. They say, legally, we are not allowed to use Fox Marvel characters like Silver Server, Galactus, X-Men, Fantastic Four, etc. But at the time of them making this movie, they didn't have the rights. Now they do have the rights. So every single creator, YouTuber, Instagrammer saying, oh, look, Galactus coming, X-Men coming, Wolverine confirmed. Yet yeah, that was all incorrect, but we knew that. So guys, let me know what is your favorite deleted scene, alternate scene. Did you want to see Heimdall versus Iron Man? That would have been hilarious. And would have been better if Professor Hulk was actually merged join Infinity War I think it would have been much better as that was the biggest criticism and I would have liked to see them actually merge because they really ruined the Hulk character I mean Hulk was awesome in Thor Ragnarok and then they ruined him in Avengers 3 and 4 and obviously I believe he has one more movie left on his deal potentially but yeah I just think the MCU have screwed the Hulk over personally but like always guys please like subscribe and comment we keep you up to date with all the latest and greatest DC and Marvel pop culture content and I will get you in another video very soon. Catch you later.